Hello fellow creators. What's one thing that 99% of people don't do? Well, when we take a look at our environment, what do we feel? Do we feel that it controls us, that we're just part of it or even victim to it, and there's nothing we can do, we just feel disenfranchised? Or do we feel that we're powerful creators, that we have the ability to change our environment, that we're truly architects and we're the operant power? Which one is it? Well, here's Dr. Joe Dispenza to give you some really good insights. You have to begin to denature the old self neurologically. You have to observe those thoughts, observe those behaviors, observe those emotions. What if you woke up in the morning and you said, what is the greatest expression of myself that I could be today? Mm -hmm. What is the greatest ideal of myself? And let me remind myself how I'm not going to think today. Let me review the thoughts that bring me back to the old self so they would never slip by unnoticed. Most people, they start off with good intentions, but they wind up on the couch the with the remote control and they just said two hours earlier they were going to work out. So you have to begin to denature the old self neurologically. You have to observe those thoughts, observe those behaviors, observe those emotions. The actual literal translation of the word meditation in Tibetan means to become familiar with. So when you become familiar with your unconscious thoughts, when you begin to notice and become familiar with your unconscious habits, and you begin to become familiar with your unconscious emotions and feelings, if you're knowing yourself, that's meditation. Now most people don't want to light a match in a dark place. They'd rather turn on the TV or get on the computer, try to make that feeling go away. The process of change First, you have to become familiar with the old self. So much so, you're going into the operating system of the subconscious and bringing to your conscious awareness Identifying. so that you know that it would never slip by unchecked by you. Then if you said, let me remind myself on who I do want to be, and you began to think in new ways, mm -hmm. and you began to plan your behaviors, and you became so involved in that experience that the thought became the experience, and you began to feel like that new ideal. Now you would get up not as the same person who sat down, because if you got up as the same person who sat down, nothing's happened. In the quantum field, neurologically, biologically, chemically, genetically, you have to get up as somebody else. And when you get up in that new state of being, you're broadcasting a whole new electromagnetic signature. And if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, get ready, because your life is about to change. The universe is going to organize an event in your life in Absolutely. a way that's right for you. The quantum model says that, you know, consciousness is non-local. So, I mean, we feel separate uh, from everything, but on, on the quantum level, you know, energetically. It could happen at any time. You can, you know, healing at a remote location, according to the quantum model, is very probable. Well, we live in two states of mind. We either live in survival or we live in creation. When you live in survival, it's all about the body, the environment, and time. But when you're in that elegant moment of creation, and we all have had these moments, mm. the f first thing that happens is you forget about yourself. You're no longer identifying with your environment. You're no longer thinking about your body, and you lose track of time. And when that happens, the frontal lobe begins to control the rest of the brain, and it begins to quiet down the rest of the circuits in your brain so that nothing else is being processed but that single thought. And when that happens, you become very present. And when you get very present like that, the thought that you're thinking is literally captured in the brain. And you begin to think in new and unusual ways. And so, in order for us to truly be in a state of creation, we have to get beyond those survival or addictive emotions. The so ego. that we, that's right, we have to become egoless. Mm -hmm. You have to become selfless. And when the frontal lobe is in control like that, it's like a great symphony leader. It's like a, a CEO that says, quiet down back there. I need to just pay attention to this thought and I need to create something new and unusual. And so it's ironic that in order for us to have control over our bodies, change our bodies health-wise, or change something in our environment or our life, or change something in time, first we have to become nobody, no thing, no time. We have to become pure consciousness to have dominion over the body, the environment, and time. Welcome back, fellow creators. So I hope you can see some insights on what 99 percent of people just don't know or don't do and what you can do is take this knowledge to those people and to yourself start being a creator in your own life start setting the example and doing amazing things and with that you can inspire others 
to become amazing creators themselves and come to the realization that the environment around us, everything, that we are able to change it through the power of two things, a clear intention and elevated emotion. And when you realize that, you realize something that 99% of people didn't know or don't act upon. And with that knowledge, you can make your environment a better place. You can make the world a better place and you can inspire others to do so as well. Today, you're a creator, not among the 99%. And the power of changing this world in an amazing way is now in your hands. So with that, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video, and leave me a comment below. All the best.